Good. So, how was the party yesterday? Who been there? Actually, while driving here, uh, we decided that the best uh, best option for this presentation is going to be just turn on some slow music and let you guys sleep. <laughs> but uh, let's try to make it through this uh, presentation. And uh, yeah, um, so just a few words about me. Uh, my name is Alex, and I work um, as a project manager at Advix. So I'm also a certified solution specialist and uh, working with Magento for like two years. Um, also, really like uh, all the meetups uh, and uh, of course conferences. So um, I put together a few uh, meetups uh, in our local town. And for those of you who want to extend our um, communication a little bit uh, further, here's my Twitter link, so you can follow me. And uh, yeah, uh, the uh, topic of today's presentation is going to be how to get Magento 2 certified and bring value to your company. And uh, you're probably wondering how the project manager talking about certified solution specialist certification uh, ended up here on back end track. I'm also uh, wondering why. But um, actually, the reason for that is that um, probably this certification is not only for managers. And uh, today we're going to try to answer four um, questions uh, that probably will um, lead you to some insights on uh, why this certification can be helpful for everybody uh, working with e-commerce, working with Magento. So the first question that we're going to answer is going to be what the actual certification is. What is the actual certification? So um, we're going to review some uh, covered areas of knowledge. Uh, we're going to review um, online passing process and a little bit more. Then the next question is uh, what does it take to prepare? So we're going to go through some um, preparation practices and uh, I think those uh, practices are going to be helpful not only for someone passing solution specialist exam but also for uh, any uh, Magento 2 certification. Then uh, the, uh, I think the most important question is what is there for you? And this is the question um, we, um, we, we're going to answer for, for you guys. So what is there for um, technical uh, people? What is there for front-end developers? What is there for back-end developers, for QA engineers in this solution specialist certification? And the last question is what's next? And uh, yeah, so these are our points for today. So, uh, with that, let's jump to the first one. And uh, what is uh, Magento 2 Certified Solution Specialist? By the way, how of you guys are uh, certified as Solution Specialists? Cool. And uh, who of you are certified, uh, Magento 2 Certified at all? I mean, by, by, by any certification. Cool. And what's that? Professional developer? Yes. Cool. So, um, yeah, obviously uh, Magento 2 Solution Specialist exam is much less technical than other Magento 2 certifications. Uh, but um, despite that, uh, the uh, covered areas of knowledge are pretty wide and they also cover some technical stuff. So, uh, of course, a good portion of this uh, certification is about e-commerce. Uh, which I think is uh, really important for uh, technical people as well. So when you work uh, with, uh, in e-commerce sphere, uh, I think you all would agree that um, having, I mean, at least basic understanding of e-commerce trends, of uh, language that is used in e-commerce is very important. The next area of knowledge is Magento 2 architecture. And of course, uh, this is not uh, Magento 2 architecture that is being covered in professional developer exam or uh, any other technical certification, but uh, here you should be aware of some basic uh, basic principles like uh, knowing uh, Magento websites, stores and store views um, structure, knowing 
some API uh, stuff like Swagger and so on. So this is also uh, very helpful for uh, non-technical people to be on the same page with technical guys. Uh, the next one is uh, features and functionality, which is of course crucial for passing this exam. And uh, yeah, the last one is applying magenta knowledge to business goals, uh, which again I think is um, a little bit easier for uh, managers and marketers to, to pass, but uh, it could be a challenge for some uh, technical people. Uh, but at the same time, this is uh, really, really great when um, people working uh, with like with the code understands understand uh, what is beyond that, what, what what business needs they are covering. So that's covered areas of knowledge. And uh, but uh, when it comes to actually passing the exam, uh, there are good be like. Um, tricky points, tricky questions that you need to deal with. And uh, I just wanted uh, to uh, quickly go through some of the um, uh, pieces of advice that I personally used. So um, the first one going to be save long questions for, for later. And uh, I don't know, uh, probably you, you already heard this advice uh, back in school. So you always um, try to postpone the most complex questions, uh, keeping in, the, uh, in your mind that uh, probably you can find some answers to them uh, while answering uh, other questions. So that's uh, one advice. Another one going to be um, the first instinct is usually the right one. So uh, of course there are some, uh, let's say, hard questions in the certification. But mostly they are not that hard as they, uh, as they seem. So um, if you have like uh, first instinct that um, to this question, this particular answer is going to be the right one, that's usually in 99% of cases going to be the right one. And I think that goes not only for solution specialist uh, certification, but for any uh, exam. Uh, the next one is uh, don't overthink. Uh, these two are actually related because uh, sometimes we like we we think we know the answer, but then we start to overthink, try to find some uh, hidden rocks uh, in the question. But but usually these questions are not that they are not designed to 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 make you make a mistake. So they are designed to for, for you to. Um, to challenge your magenta knowledge, not to challenge uh, your like uh, logical thinking. So usually the uh, most obvious answer is the right one. And uh, also uh, there are scenario-based questions in the um, exam, and I think uh, there are also scenario-based questions in developers' uh, certifications, right? Yeah, so, um, and, but, but in this particular certification, scenario-based questions are mostly about uh, applying magenta to business knowledge. So, uh, how, how to deal with them is basically the, I mean, the best advice is to have as much real experience as possible before going to the exam. So, I would say that at least one year actively working with magenta uh, would be really helpful for you when dealing with those kind of questions. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, probably the the most um, obvious advice, so have as much experience as you can. But also try to think as if you were in this situation and uh, as you uh, have to make a decision. So, uh, and the last one uh, would be um, if you don't know the answer, uh, just uh, postpone the question and then in the end, for example, you have like two or three questions that you really don't know the answer for and then you need to... Uh, base, uh, actually, who knows what's going to be the advice here? What, what to do if you really don't know the answer at all? Please. Take a guess. <laughs> yeah, take a guess, but how? 
Yeah. The, uh, actually, it could be an option, but I would recommend uh, simply choosing uh, one single um, answer for all the questions. So, for example, A, 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 or B, 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 and uh, that's uh, actually results in you uh, maximizing your uh, chances of having at least one correct answer. So, yeah, that's also <laughs> from school, but uh, yeah, could be helpful here. But um, uh, also uh, for this exam, um, when it uh, when it just landed, it was not pass possible to pass it online. But uh, now uh, every uh, Magenta certification is possible to pass online, uh, which is great. And but there are a few um, tricky points when passing the certification online. So uh, first of all, you need some. Um, hardware and other uh, and software uh, to, to do that and you of course need your computer for that and I was specifically instructed by my team lead not to joke about uh, Linux on backend track but uh, <laughs> sorry guys but Linux will not work here I mean it could work of course Linux is the best but uh, you will have uh, less, uh, less problems if you just use Mac or uh, Windows because the software that you're going to be provided with is uh, for Macs or, uh, Mac or Windows. Of course, you can adjust it to, to Linux as well. Then you need HD webcam. Uh, so uh, basically, and that sh should be a standalone uh, device because you cannot use your built-in webcam you need to place it uh, nearby uh, so your uh, yourself and your hands are visible for the examinator and then uh, you will need uh, half an hour um, sorry hour and a half uh, of free time to to pass the exam and uh, you will need a quiet room uh, uh, where no one will interrupt you during this hour and a half while passing the exam uh, this seems pretty pretty easy, but um, uh, we actually in the company at Atwix we made it even uh, more uh, convenient. So we put together a small certification center inside our office. So that's how it looks like. Uh, there is a sign on, on the door saying "Magenta to Certified Solution Specialist Exam." We also put a prepared a laptop there with all the software installed. We have a webcam there, and um, yeah, so this is uh, for, for our people uh, who want to get certified that they can come to the office because we are distributed, so we can work from anywhere, but if you want to get certified, you can go to the office and do that uh, there with more convenience. Uh, yeah, also I forgot to mention that you need a stable internet connection, which is very important for passing the exam online. Uh, but what to do when some problems occur? Um, we faced quite, uh, quite a lot of them while uh, passing the exam online. Uh, and actually this is, um, this is quite a challenge for people trying to pass the exam online because most of these problems will never happen to you if you're dealing with um, certification center. But still, if you decided to to go with online passing, there are some, uh, some tips you may want to know. So the first one is what to do when you missed your time slot uh, and why it could happen. Uh, it could happen because uh, while registering you uh, pick up your time slot based on US central uh, time zone. And obviously while passing you're going to be in your local uh, time zone which uh, sometimes, even for senior engineers, is very hard to convert. Uh, so yeah, uh, make sure you don't miss your time slot, because uh, we had few occasions when people came for the exam when it was already um, uh, uh, already gone. So, uh, but uh, the good news here are that uh, this case is uh, refundable. Uh, so, in, in case you missed your time slot, you just need to reach out to Magenta U Support and request a second coupon code to, to pass the exam second time. So, uh, the, um, 
Next uh, issue that you may uh, face is, for example, you're passing the exam from home and someone entered the room. Uh, or, um, okay, you instructed everybody in your house not to enter the room, but then you have like some technical issue. For example, the webcam that you installed uh, uh, fall down, or uh, you have like unstable internet connection and you need someone to restart the router. So these are possible, uh, possible cases when someone needs to enter the room, um, but uh, please do not do that because uh, that's going to result in immediate um, uh, cancellation of your um, session of, uh, of the passing and also that's not uh, uh, refundable. So uh, you will lose your money, you will lose the uh, try to pass uh, uh, the exam and basically you will need to pay one more time for the voucher to, to pass the exam. Uh, yeah, technical issues, as I mentioned, slow internet connection, uh, webcam is not working, some software problems, but that's also um, not, that, um, not that scary, because uh, in the end, uh, should you face any technical issues, you can always um, afterwards um, reach out to Magento U support and request, uh, I mean, um, additional uh, voucher to pass the exam one more time. So basically, if they don't have specific reason to deny you, like for example, they saw that someone entered the room, they're gonna provide you with the second try. Next question for today. Um, what does it take to prepare? So we already uh, started discussing this matter. So we mentioned that there are particular kinds of questions that you will probably want to prepare for, but uh, there is more. Uh, what do you think is the best way to prepare? Uh, for, for you folks who passed the, uh, the exam, what, what, what is, like, if, if you could give only one advice uh, for a person wanting to pass the exam, what, what, what's going to be? Sweet author. Uh Money yeah. To prepare. Yeah. yeah. Any other? That's a, they are really Speak great, great guys. Yeah. I was, I was one of the first of uh, preparing the to certification, so I found a lot of uh, little bugs in the in the system, so I reported them immediately to mm -hmm. to not be guy of the developers who are preparing. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, I I also have recommendation about Swift Order. But uh, that's um, another um, topic. But sharing my experience, uh, I, want, I want to tell you a story. So um, I decided to pass the exam uh, as soon as it landed. So it landed in actually 2017, but uh, that was uh, like a better version. And then uh, I think early 2018, uh, they, uh, they released the final version and uh, it was available for everybody for passing and I committed uh, to pass it, uh, I registered and that was February 2018 I had like literally three months to prepare because I decided that the uh, D-Day gonna be in March so I uh, registered for, for March and uh, Actually, um, I would say I didn't spend these uh, three months as effective as I could. So <laughs> the first two months uh, I was just playing PlayStation, thinking about the certification, which was, of course, my procrastination na uh, procrastinating nature. But then when uh, it was like one month left, uh, I made a commitment and uh, pushed really hard, and I prepared for like one hour a week which I thought going to be enough, but uh, yeah, obviously uh, it was not enough. And uh, then when one week was left, I like um, pushed really, really hard and pre was preparing for like a few hours a day. And by the end of this intensive preparation process, I managed to finish half of the Swift Order study guide. So, uh, and yeah, I went uh, for the exam and obviously I failed it. And surprisingly, the questions that I failed were from this second part of the study guide that I never even read. 
So uh, yeah, the answer for me was pretty obvious. So answering uh, how, uh, what is the best way to prepare, uh, finish the study guide, you stupid. So yeah, and actually I finished and um, I passed the exam from the second try. But uh, the funny thing here is that, um, who of you guys listening to my talk? And uh, yeah, cool. And they had uh, recently a, uh, an issue of the podcast uh, where they were talking about um, certification process and they actually uh, had a few guys from Magento U team uh, who were working on the certification, so certifications. And uh, they mentioned that uh, the way I did it is actually the most convenient way because uh, one of the guys mentioned that the best way is to go for the, for the exam, fail it, uh, see what areas of knowledge you are weak in, then prepare uh, these exact areas and you will pass it. So that's what I did and apparently that's not, uh, not the worst option. But I think you could do better uh, without second try and uh, here are some um, pieces of advice. So study guides, of course we have Magenta U official study guide, which is great for, um, I would say, final stages of the preparation because um, they, uh, what they did is they just listed all the um, areas of knowledge they have in the exam and they listed like literally specific um, topics they base their uh, questions on. So this is really good for um, those of you guys who, who are uh, experienced with Magento and just want to revise your knowledge and um, review the weak areas. But uh, yeah, of course the second study guide, which is absolutely necessary for everybody uh, to prepare is Swift Order. So it's uh, very easy to find it right now. It's very popular in the community. So yeah, go and check, check, check them. There are, so guys did a fantastic job on putting together all the, uh, I mean, pieces of knowledge that um, will be required for you to, to prepare. They also have a lot of external resources listed so you can go and read about uh, SEO, about marketing stuff, so yeah, very helpful. But uh, what else? And um, I think that this particular page, while preparing for the exam, should be your favorite one uh, in the internet. So uh, working with Magento 2 admin, uh, in my opinion, is absolutely crucial uh, for passing uh, the solution specialist exam. So. Uh, what, what I did, my approach was I, um, I like uh, read something in Swift Order Guide, for example, and then I immediately uh, went to Magento Admin and checked that. So that's, I think, good advice. Then, uh, mentors, uh, we basically, um, so in the company, um, we have now a few people who passed the exam. And of course, some people uh, didn't. So what we did is we made, made small groups of people. So, uh, some people were mentors, so they were helping others to prepare. And I can probably put uh, another presentation about this process. But uh, yeah, the advice for you guys is gonna be uh, if you have uh, a person somewhere nearby uh, that you can reach out to and uh, ask some uh, questions about the certification that can probably be tricky to you. Uh, this is very good, uh, very good approach. And also, of course, if you are certified, uh, that's always a great idea to share your knowledge. That's uh, always uh, helping to be up to date, to refresh your knowledge regularly. So that's also a good advice, I think. The third question we have here today, uh, what is there for you? And Actually, I want to ask you guys who also passed the exam, uh, what was there for you? What was the main reason uh, you committed to pass the, um, the certification? Once again. Yeah, yeah sure. 
so for me it was a challenge because I was one of the first. So I wanted to check if it's uh, if it's for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I realized during preparation that uh, preparation is also uh, systematization of the knowledge, and that's the, the biggest value for me because yeah. I didn't 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 even realize how much stuff I know from the practical part, but I don't have the the, the background. I don't have the uh, I don't know uh, the reasons well. So during certification pre preparation, uh, I just realized why some things are working like that, or uh, why it's, uh, it's this way, not another. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was, uh, sorry guys, uh, I would really love to hear other of you, but I, I see that I have two minutes left, and still one more question to answer. So uh, yeah, for me, that was uh, the exact same reason. I just realized that there is no way that I will uh, prepare for this exam, pass it, and not uh, uh, become better in what I do uh, in Magento and in e-commerce. So that was also the main reason, not the badge of being solution specialist and uh, talking with you today, but uh, the preparation process and all the uh, systematization and um, knowledge that is related to that. Uh, but also there is another one, uh, this uh, amazing quote from uh, Petro Drucker, uh, which says, uh, there is nothing so useless as doing efficiently that we shouldn't be done at all. That's my favorite quote uh, in daily routine, because uh, we do so many things uh, and we of course try to do them as efficiently as we can, but sometimes that they just don't uh, make any sense. And this particular certification is really focused on uh, meaning behind solutions. So on e-commerce, on application to business knowledge, on some Magento default functionality that already exists and that we don't need to develop one more time, probably. So that's an uh, amazing quote to keep in mind while doing, doing daily routine. And that will definitely help you um, tackling your daily work uh, in a different way. But uh, the, first, uh, the first question for today and the last one is what's next? And uh, this is actually the main point of today's presentation because um, we've been talking about uh, the exam, but uh, what's next? And uh, in the team, we, um, so we basically had me and uh, my team lead um, certified as solution specialists, but then we decided we we, uh, we decided what if we have everybody in the team certified? And uh, the second question that we uh, had was, will that help us to be more on the same page, and will the, uh, will that help us to understand? each other better and to provide better service to our clients and the answer was obviously yes. So uh, what we did, we um, committed to uh, pass the, uh, we committed to become uh, the uh, first 100% um, certified team inside the company and uh, what uh, happened next is that other teams also decided that that would be great to become certified. Uh, so not, not like only project manager or not only QA engineer, but the whole team. And uh, probably uh, I think that it is very likely that by the end of the year, Advix is going to be the first Magenta agency that is 100% certified, uh, which uh, of course uh, I mean, will help us to deliver better value to our clients, but mostly important is that uh, this, I think, will help us to be more on the same page and work with uh, people that you understand and who understands you, and uh, which is always great. And uh, yeah, it is a pleasure to work with people uh, who are on the same page with you. So with that, uh, thank you, and uh, should you have any questions, and if we have some more time, uh, feel free to reach out. Sure.
One question, are there questions in the exam, there is only one answer body or there are multiple ones? So there are questions with uh, single answer and there are questions with multiple choices. But for the questions uh, with multiple choices, I think they always put uh, how many uh, answers uh, you should have, so it's kind of easy. So it's the same on the developer one, and that's why I wouldn't give the advice to always give the same answer if you don't know the answer, like you said, like B, 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 because for the multiple ones, that would definitely not work. Yeah, of course, that, that's not working for multiple choice questions, but uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, that could be an option for single choice. Sure. So yeah, thank you guys for your attention, and uh, uh, let's have a talk to you.